This is the HP ZBook X2. It's HP's all-in-one tablet PC that is catered to creatives. What's it like to draw on? That's what we're here to find out. The ZBook X2 is a tablet PC. That means it runs full Windows 10. So it's not just a drawing tablet, but it's the only computer that you're going to need. It's in the same range as the Surface Pro, like the one I reviewed here last week, or Wacom's Mobile Studio Pro, which I reviewed here on this channel a while back. Before I dive in deep, I'm not going to talk about the software that comes preloaded on this. It looks to be pretty heavily customized when I booted it up. I ended up getting this used on eBay to save myself some cash, but I don't trust used computers that are already set up for me, so I wiped everything and just started with vanilla windows. And no, vanilla windows is not a new flavor of Ben and Jerry's. My tongue! It's just Windows 10 with no extra stuff installed. I do kind of regret getting this used. It's probably not something I'm going to do again. It's not because it's a bad device, it's just that I want that full experience and that's something I couldn't do by getting a used one. The good news is even after wiping it, almost all the hardware, the pen, the touchscreen, it all worked fine without having me to go and download a ton of drivers. The one exception being the express keys, which I had to find drivers for. This came out months ago. Why are you reviewing it now? I've had my eye on it for a while, but it's been out of the price range of this humble little channel. I forget what it originally cost. My arm! Oh no, my leg! Oh, that's right, about $2,400. But good news! I get my arm and leg back. The price on this has really come down. On sites like B&H Photo and on Amazon, those prices have fluctuated every couple days, but one trend is clear. They are way lower than they were at the beginning of the year. And at $1,200 to $1,400, this tablet computer computer is a really good deal. With a lot of computers, you don't want to get the cheapest one, but the base configuration here is really good. We have an i7 processor, eight gigabytes of RAM, a 14 inch 4K screen, only a 128 gigabyte hard drive, but there is an SD card slot, so if you wanna expand your storage, you can do that on the cheap. A Surface with the same configuration and specs minus the 14 inch screen will probably run you about 1750 once you add in the keyboard and pen. What does the keyboard and pen cost here? Not a nothing, it all comes in the box. And you get express keys along the side, like the Mobile Studio Pro. And ports, this thing is designed for creative pros, so we have a lot of ports here. HDMI ports, standard USB, two USB-Cs, and an SD card slot that I mentioned earlier. This is all to say that this machine is designed Designed for work and it has the power to pull it off. The trade-off you make for this kind of performance and flexibility is in its weight. With the keyboard cover, it weighs in at a whopping five pounds. But let's face it, you wimpy creatives could stand to lift a little weight now and then, right? But I need my arm and leg back first. Right, we lower the price, there you go. The other trade-off here is that I was only getting about three hours of battery life out of this thing before I needed to charge it back up. This is a lot lower than the Surface Pro, but it's on par with what the Mobile Studio Pro does. But what really sets this apart from the Surface Pro is that it has shortcut keys along the side. I love them. You can go keyboard free on a Windows tablet, but a lot of painting programs, at least the ones I rely on, you really need to use the keyboard shortcuts if you're going to be efficient. With shortcut keys right there along the side, you really truly can go keyboard free for long stretches of time. On the Surface Pro, I'm always flipping the keyboard cover around, flipping it back to do random things, or I'm using something like Tablet Pro so I can get shortcuts right there on my screen, but that takes up screen real estate. Which brings me back to great design edition number two, which is the keyboard is also Bluetooth, so it works even when it's not attached. This is a feature I didn't know I needed until right now. So take notes, other tablet makers. If you're selling a $150 keyboard cover, there's really no reason that it shouldn't also be Bluetooth. Being able to detach the keyboard, have it off to the side is just so nice. No more flipping it around whenever you want to type out a quick message or something, change brush size. Yes, yes, there is a software keyboard on Windows, but I like real keys better. Let's talk about this 4K screen. It's a mixed bag. Are there more shards of glass in that bag? Not only is the resolution really high, but the colors are pretty good. It has full Adobe RGB. The downside is that the viewing angles aren't very good. If you spend your time looking at the screen straight on, you're good, it, it looks fine. But just by tilting it a little bit, you can see that the top or the bottom of the screen gets darker. And the reason this is a problem is because this is a drawing tablet. You're always setting it at different angles. It's not a laptop where you set it in one place and you type on it for a while. 
drawing tablets get turned so you can get a better drawing angle or we set the kickstand at a different angle to try different things. So I found myself fighting against those bad screen angles a lot. Since they made the color so good on this, it's just a shame that you can only get them if you're looking at it the right way. This is also a touch screen. It's great for using touch gestures like pinch and zoom or to pan around your drawing. The downside here is that occasionally I did get some false touches on there when my palm was resting on the screen. On several occasions, I accidentally selected a layer or toggled a layer off. It kind of thing bugs you from time to time, but the touch can be turned off. Packed into the device is this. This is HP's own pen. The pen uses Wacom's EMR technology. What does that mean in English? It means it's really good. I say this in reviews all the time, but the number one thing I'm looking for in a drawing tablet is how well it draws. And this draws really well. Good pressure curve, check. Holds pressure really well, check. Clean angled lines, check. Good initial activation rate, check. It even has tilt support, check. This is usually the longest part of my drawing tablet reviews, but when everything just works the way you want it to and expect it to, there's really not much else to say. It's a great drawing experience. The screen itself has a matte finish on it. This does dull the colors a little bit compared to say a Surface Pro or an iPad, devices that have glossy screens. But the benefit here is that your stylus has more control. It's not just gonna slide around accidentally on a glass screen. This is really a preference thing. Are you really looking for those super accurate colors or do you want the better control with the stylus? Personally, I really want the better control and I like the feel of drawing on this. It's not quite as good as drawing on the etched glass screen of the Mobile Studio Pro, but it's definitely good enough. Holding the stylus feels okay. I prefer styluses that are a bit wider at the top. Feels kind of like holding the Apple Pencil because it's thinner. I should mention the stand. It pulls out from the back. It's pretty sturdy, even sturdier than I would say the Surface Pro. I found that it stays up better under pressure when your hand is pressing against it. So that's another check mark in the good job column there. These check marks are so heavy. What are they made of? Cast iron. Keep up the good work. So far, my reception to this device has been pretty positive. But are there any negatives or drawbacks? What are the cons? Well, I've mentioned two of them. The first one being the occasional false positives with your palm touching the screen, and the other one being the screen angles when you're not looking at it straight on. But there's another one. There's an elephant in the room that I'm going to spend a little bit of time on. A lot of folks aren't going to care about this, but I'm just going to say it. This is the ugliest computer I have ever owned. It just looks and feels cheap. It's not well designed visually or from a UX perspective. Part of this is subjective. I understand that. I personally don't like the hard edge angles and those hard edge angles are inconsistent. Sometimes you go from really hard edges to round edges like on the keyboard. And there are a lot of seams on this and a lot of edges and ridges that don't really feel all that necessary. For example, the little plastic doodads all over the keyboard, probably to keep it from touching the screen when it's closed, but it just doesn't look good. Things like the trackpad being off-centered. The keyboard cover is leather and the edge just kind of sticks out and flaps about. Not only does it look bad, but it makes it less comfortable to carry too. The really wide bezels, which I don't mind, it does make it look a little bit different, but what I do mind is the bezels are different widths on the top and the bottom and the sides. And it's not just the design of it, what the product is made of feels cheap and dated. The plastic used on the device sucks up your fingers oil. It's not something you can just wipe away. It stains the plastic. This is very cheap plastic that I'm used to seeing on cheap Chinese drawing tablets. I expect that from a $200 product. I don't expect that in a $2,000 product. Overall, the whole thing feels dated. The power charger is big and chunky. It sticks way out from the tablet. It looks like a power charger that shipped with a Dell laptop I bought during the Bush administration. And it comes with the restoration DVD from around the same time. This thing doesn't even have a DVD drive. Now at this point, a lot of you are watching thinking, wow, this dude is petty. But I'm a designer, this is what I do. These are the details I notice and I just don't want to use a product that looks like this 8, 10, 12 hours a day. I so desperately want HP to get this right because they're so close. HP will never watch this, they have no idea who I am, but on the off chance that someone there sees it, I really hope you guys do a second version of this product. It's important to know your audience. You need to read the room. You're selling to creatives, photographers, designers, illustrators, 3D animators. These are the people who know good design because they're the ones who are creating good design. Last week, I reviewed the Surface Pro, which from a design perspective is a beautiful product. They paid attention to all of the details. I can say the same thing about Wacom's Mobile Studio Pro, and I can say the same thing about any Apple laptop. Those are what creatives are using. The 
bar for what a good product is has changed a lot over the last decade, and this product really does feel stuck in the past. Now, HP, I have seen the things that you have designed recently, and they're not bad. You got design chops, I know you do. When you rework this thing, hand it off to those design teams, the design teams who created this or created this. Don't design by committee. Just hand it off to them and let them run wild. You guys still there? Is anybody, is anybody left? I've really gone on for a while. I'm talking to myself. No, you are, Brad. So my conclusion, for $1,200 $1,400, this is a pretty good deal. You're getting a great processor, you're getting good specs, you're getting a good device. And I think at that price point, a lot of people are gonna be able to overlook the design and not care. But I would say if you can only find it for over $2,000, I would take a look at something like Wacom's Mobile Studio Pro. Like I said, I really hope HP sticks with this product. I hope they come up with a second generation of it. I would love to see more. I think they are on the right path. I think they could really kill it in this niche. They just need to put their heads down and do it. So what do you think? Am I being too rough on this device? Let me know down below in the comment section. That's all I got for today. Thank you guys for watching.